Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to NPTEL lecture series on classics in total synthesis. So we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of uh, natural products. So today talk about total synthesis of a natural product called periplanonum B. So this is a very interesting natural product actually it was isolated from American cockroaches okay this is a sex pheromone um, and why this particular compound was important because very minute quantities of this pheromone was obtained less than milligram was obtained from these cockroaches and it took about 25 years it took about 25 years to report the isolation of two pheromones periplanones and periplanones a and b and if you look at their structures okay so first periplanon a it's it's little bit complex okay so it has two epoxides two double bonds one carbonyl group and one isopropyl group okay the first synthesis of periplanon b was reported by still in 1979 actually before he completed the total synthesis of periplanon B, initially he made two wrong isomers before he completed the total synthesis. The reaction which he used as a key reaction in the total synthesis of periplanon B still used anionic axicope rearrangement as a key reaction to form this cyclodecane unit. Okay, it's a 10 membered ring you can see. So this 10 member ring was cleverly formed using anionic oxycope rearrangement. Okay. And according to him, if you look at this molecule, he thought the two epoxides can be made by two different methods. One epoxide, that is this epoxide can be made directly from the double bond using MCPBA or nucleophilic epoxidizing agent. Whereas the other epoxide can be made from the carbonyl group directly using sulfonium elide or sulfoxonium elide. Okay, basically sulfur based elides if you treat with carbonyl group it can form epoxide. So that is how we plan. Okay. And this if you look at the, this particular cyclodecanone, his idea was it can be made using anionic oxycope rearrangement. So this is the key reaction. This is the key reaction, anionic oxycope rearrangement followed by when you do the anionic oxycope rearrangement what will happen? You will get like this, okay. That enolate again if you add MCPBA then you will get corresponding alpha hydroxy keto, okay. So that is called rubatom oxidation. So a combination of anionic oxycope followed by rubatom oxidation will give this corresponding alpha hydroxy keto. So that was his idea. And this as you can see if you have uh, the beta gamma unsaturated ketone see alpha beta gamma. So beta gamma unsaturated ketone then simply you can add vinyl lithium or vinyl magnesium bromide you will get this intermediate or precursor required for anionic oxycope rearrangement and that can be obtained from this cyclohexene which is commercially available or well known in the literature. So he started with this compound uh, then the primary alcohol was protected with uh, ethyl vinyl ether and then PPTS. 
So, you protected this alcohol as ethoxyethyl ether uh, which, which is nothing but this one. Okay. So, normally primary alcohols are protected as uh, TBDPS, TBA, TMS and also people olden days they used to pro uh, protect it as THP ether. Okay. They treat with dihydropyrin. Okay. So, this was uh, prior to the TBDMS, TBDPS ether era. Then you generate anion and then quench with this aldehyde and that aldehyde was then trapped with acetic anhydride to get the corresponding acetate. Okay. Next, this is the enone. Okay. If you treat with trimethyl tin, trimethyl tin hydride and butyl lithium, that will generate the corresponding lithium, okay. lithio trimethyl stannine derivative. So, that can undergo a 1,4 addition to this enone and which can be trapped as the TMS ether. So, that is what he did. Okay. So, when you add this uh, lithio trimethyl stannine, it will undergo 1,4 addition. The resultant enolate was trapped as the enol TMS ether. At this stage, he used a lithium dimethyl cuprate. So, lithium dimethyl cuprate is known to undergo a 1,4 addition like on allylic acetate. So, what will happen? The methyl group will attack and the double bond will come and then your acetate will go. Okay. So, that is how he introduced the second methyl group which is required for making the isopropyl group. Okay. So, right hand side is done. Now, he has to generate the ketone. So, for that first he treated with the MCPBA. So, MCPBA you know it forms this and then elimination takes place you get the corresponding cyclohexenone. So, once you have the cyclohexenone now you have to add the vinyl grignard or vinyl lithium species. So, addition of vinyl lithium gave, gave the precursor for anionic oxycoprioridone. Okay, as you can see 3 3 nicely located to get the corresponding anionic oxycoprioridone. So, this was treated with potassium hydride in, a, in the presence of 18 crown 6. So, it underwent the anionic oxy rearrangement and if you quench with TMS chloride, you get the corresponding enol TMS ether. Then you add MCPBA. Okay. That MCPBA, as I said, it is nothing but it will undergo rubatum oxidation to introduce a hydroxyl group next to the carbonyl. So, that is how he could introduce the hydroxyl group next to the carbonyl. Okay. So, he thought he is very close. What needs to be done? You have to make epoxide here and then sulfonium amylide will make epoxide here and basically he also has to eliminate this to introduce the exocyclic double bond. So, he protected the secondary alcohol as uh, TBS ether. So, then you can see the confirmation. So, this is how the molecule looks because it is a 10 membered ring. So, 10 membered ring can form several puckered shape. So, this is one of the stable confirmation on that he did first the epoxidation. Okay. So, epoxidation you know it is a electron deficient double bond. So, you can use tetra butyl hydroperoxide and triton B. So, when you look at this compound the epoxide will come from the back side. Okay. Epoxide will come from the back side. So, in the product you can see that it is alpha epoxide. But for periplanone B, the epoxide should be beta. Okay, what you are getting is alpha. Nevertheless, he went ahead and then he treated with the corresponding sulfonium elide, okay, trimethyl sulfonium elide to get the epoxide. So, again, if you look at this compound, one, this is opposite stereochemistry, second, this is also opposite stereochemistry. Okay. But nevertheless, it is good to make more analogs of the natural product. So, for that what should be done? You have to introduce the exocyclic double bond. Okay. So, you remove the ethoxy ethyl protecting group with acetic acid water. So, you get the primary alcohol and that primary alcohol if you treat with orthonitrile phenyl serinocyanide. So, you get this particular intermediate. It is well known this upon treatment with hydrogen peroxide or MCPBA, it will form the corresponding selenoxide as well as 
later it will undergo elimination to introduce the double bond. So that is how you could introduce the double bond and removal of the TBS group, release the secondary alcohol which upon oxidation gave the ketone. And this ketone none of the spectral data are matching with periplonode B. So that is obviously because of these two epoxides are opposite to the natural periplonone B. Okay, you can see that. So here it is beta and here the CH2 is beta. So he went back, okay, he still did not know whether the epoxide here is the correct one or not. So he thought he can work around and then get epoxide arising from the ketone. So first he did the Peterson olefination, introduced the double bond, then on that he wanted to selectively do the epoxidation. So for that it is better to remove the TBS group so that you will have allylic alcohol which can direct the epoxidation. Okay, so he removed the TBS group then treated with uh, vanadium acac and then tetrabutyl hydroperoxide. So now he could get this CH2 is beta. Okay, then oxidation gave ketone and followed by the same three steps protocol to convert this into double bond. Now if you look at this isomer, you can see all are same except this epoxide. Here the epoxide is exactly opposite to periplanonone B. So again he has to go back. So at this point what he thought was, he will protect this hydroxyl now as TBS ether and at this stage that is the ethoxy vinyl group he wanted to remove and then convert that into exocyclic double bond first. So he did that. Now you can see you have everything except that these two epoxides. Okay. So he took this compound and the low energy conformation if you look at, so there are two conformations you can write and this can flip to this conformation and now if you look at this is the low energy conformation and if one has to do epoxidation of this double bond that will become beta. Okay. So at this stage he did the uh, epoxidation of the alpha beta unsaturated ketone selectively. So he got the beta epoxide as a major isomer. Okay. He could separate and then on that he did the sulfonamylite treatment to get the epoxide here. Now the left hand side epoxide also beta and the right hand side also that is the middle carbon also he got epoxide where the oxygen is alpha. Okay. Then remove the protecting group with the TBF. So TBS was removed and then oxidation with the chromium trioxide pyridine that is Collins reagent he could get periplanone B. So before he made periplanone B he made two isomers. In one isomer both the stereo centers of epoxides were opposite and the second one, one was correct, the other one was not. Okay. So overall if you look at this synthesis of periplanone B, that was the first total synthesis reported by Clark Steele, he used anionic oxico rearrangement followed by rubatum oxidation as the key reaction to introduce alpha hydroxy ketone and overall he took about 15 steps and the yield, the combined yield is about 9% uh, uh, which is uh, really remarkable considering this uh, dense functional groups present in the natural product. The second total synthesis of periplonone B uh, which we will discuss was reported by Stuart Schreiber's group in 1984. He also used anionic oxycope rearrangement but on a different substrate. Okay. He used anionic oxycope rearrangement followed by the electrocyclic ring opening as key reaction to introduce the diene present in this molecule. Okay. Let us see how he has done. So his idea was, okay, both the epoxides can be introduced uh, starting from this ketone and if you look at this, this diene he wanted to use electrocyclic ring opening to get the diene. Okay. So electrocyclic ring opening of the cyclobutene will give this diene 
and that can be obtained by a anionic oxycope rearrangement. So, so you can see both groups used anionic oxycope rearrangement, but both are using on different substrates. So that is how in synthesis when you want to work on total synthesis of one molecule, the same reaction can be used on different substrates and essentially they can make the same natural product. Okay? So that type of flexibility and creativity can be seen in many total synthesis. And this can be obtained from uh, this bicyclic ketone and this bicyclic ketone can be obtained from this natural product which is commercially available uh, with allene through a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. Okay. Let us see how he has done. First, it was a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition between the cyclohexenone and allene. So, he got a mixture of 2 is to 1 and of course, the major isomer is the required one. He took that compound and then treated it with vinyl magnesium bromide. So, the vinyl magnesium bromide gave the alcohol, the lyric alcohol. So, this upon treatment with potassium hydride and 18 crown 6, it underwent the anionic oxycope rearrangement. As you see, you can write like this. So, now you have the 10 membered ring also the 10 membered ring is fused with a 4 membered ring. Okay? And this 4 membered ring that is cyclobutene, if you heat it, it forms the diene. But unfortunately, this is a cis double bond. Okay? When you do this ring opening reaction, what he got was exocyclic double bond and the internal double bond was cis. But in the natural product, the internal double bond was trans. Of course, cis trans isomerization can be easily done under photochemical condition. So, he tried the photochemical condition. So, he could easily isomerize the cis double bond to trans. So, now one epoxidation, another epoxidation and you have to introduce a ketone. So, these are three things left. So, first he introduced a SPH group at the alpha position and then oxidize with sodium peroidate to get the introduce the double bond okay sulfoxide and then sulfoxide was eliminated to get the double bond okay so once you have the double bond you make the epoxide so it's a alpha beta unsaturated ketone electron deficient so you have to use nucleophilic epoxidizing agent so potassium hydride and the tertiary butyl hydroperoxide gave the beta epoxide so that's a major isomer now he introduced the double bond on the other side. So, that is uh, this side again using lithium hexamethyl disulfide followed by quenching with phenylacetylene bromide and instead of introducing the double bond okay, here, so here what you need is you need to introduce a hydroxyl group isn't it first you need to introduce a hydroxyl group. So, what he did he used a selenopumerer rearrangement to introduce a hydroxyl group. So, for that first he introduced uh, a phenylcelino group by treating with lithium hexamethyl disulfide and phenylcelinyl bromide. Then you oxidize the phenylcelinide with hydrogen peroxide to form the phenylcelinoxide. Then you treat with acetic anhydride. So, when you treat with acetic anhydride, so what happens? You get this OCOCH3. Okay? So, then intramolecularly you know this will attack and then this will come and then you will get the carbonyl group. So, you get 1, 2 diketo. Okay? So, this is a Selena Promora rearrangement. Now, you have two ketones and selectively the trimethyl sulfonium elide added to this ketone not only regio it is stereoselective to get 62 percent yield of the required natural product periplanonone B. So, it is one of the shortest synthesis of periplanonone B, which involved again an interesting anionic oxycope rearrangement. So, this is the mechanism of uh, selena pomer rearrangement and also 2 plus 2 cycloaddition to get the precursor for uh, the anionic oxycope rearrangement. Then, he also used uh, electrocyclic ring opening of cyclobutene and then selena pomer rearrangement to introduce a ketone next to the ketone and a highly stereo and regioselective 
epoxidation of ketone using trimethyl sulfonium elide. Overall, it took about 13 steps and the yield was uh, close to 2%. Okay, so with this I will stop here and then we will talk about more natural products in the next video. Okay, thank you.